All right, welcome back. Can we give it up for Total Recall? Recall, recall. So 27 years ago, Total Recall, how did it hold up? Awesome. Right? Now one, the special effects, uh, when you're dealing with, with actual latex and when you're dealing with physical um, beings, in a sense, there's probably nobody better than Rob Bottin, so can we give it up for this man? Uh, those of you who are fans of John Carpenter's The Thing, um, John Carpenter really gave him that, that boost, that extra amount of creativity to, to think up things that perhaps um, they stick with you. Now, you know, as a 14-year-old, I was, I was prime for this film. Uh, and um, I think that whenever you come into contact some, with something, when you're at a, a very open and vulnerable age, those things, they stick with you. And it's hard to stay open and vulnerable as you get older. And this is, uh, this is a, a problem, right? Is that at teaching film history, I find that whatever generation you sort of come, came of age, then that's what you find as a classic. And then as you get older, you just, you, they don't make movies like they used to. <laughs> and then you're here, instead of going out to the new movies. And I think it's important, right? Because Paul Verhoeven, um, there were a lot of people who were quite depressed when he came to the United States and started making schlocky genre films. Uh, they didn't see what he was doing. And so that transition of coming over from the Netherlands and making some very, very aggressively uh, confusing Dutch films. How many of you have seen uh, Turkish Delight? Okay, those of you who are Blade Runner fans, there's a reason why uh, Rutger Hauer is famous, and it's because of Paul Verhoeven, not Blade Runner. And him starting off early uh, with a movie like Turkish Delight, and perhaps working into a movie I would have dreamed to play this weekend, Flesh and Blood. Um, Rutger Hauer is sort of one of those underrated and overlooked actors. After Blade Runner, he was offered a handful of really spectacular roles, but for no money and he decided to take the paycheck. And he did a bunch of straight to VHS and video films and his career has um, not been perhaps what we would have expected. And that is what I think Total Recall perhaps um, could help remind you of, is that while this movie was quite successful in the mainstream, um, I would hope that some of you would want to write a fucking thesis on this. Uh, this movie is extremely smart. And if it isn't just referencing Todd Browning's Freaks, uh, it isn't just uh, a wonderful adaptation of those of you that love Philip K. Dick. It's, it's, uh, he's got a turban on his head for a reason. That, that's not an accident, right? These things aren't supposed to just look funny. Um, it's got a wonderful sense of humor. And uh, I'm very excited many of you have stuck around to see Basic Instinct. Can we give it up for Basic Instinct? Now, how many of you have seen this movie before? Let's just raise your hands. Great. How many of you have not seen the film? Be very proud. There's a few of you who haven't raised your hand, so let's see it. Now, this is an infamous film, uh, and it's quite famous at the same time. Now, when I booked this movie, uh, we are truly dealing with the 25th anniversary of the movie. And revisiting any kind of cinema 20 years later, I think, is always important. In fact, any attitudes and decisions that you have, you should always be revisiting them about 20 years later. <laughs> and when I booked this film, uh, in fact, Jennifer, who uh, used to run Frameline, and in fact, she is a wonderful programmer here, she was quite excited to tell me that she protested this film um, in 1992 here in San Francisco when they were making it. And it was a huge campaign that um, people, they didn't just try and ruin the way that the film was shot because they would get up in the windows, they would chant certain sayings just to mess up the filming. Uh, they also then tried to ruin the release of this movie uh, because it was quite upsetting and offensive uh, for a queer community. And in 1992, it's important to think about that there was very few representations. 
I don't know how many of these protesters had actually seen the film, but it definitely was pushing a lot of buttons. Now, I was fascinated hearing this because I grew up in Salt Lake City, Utah, and Basic Instinct was protested and in fact banned from many of the theaters. Larry H. Miller, he owns the majority of the theaters there because it had homosexual themes in it. So this is a fascinating moment right now, 25 years later. Neither, I think, of these protesters were actually watching the fucking movie. <laughs> but both of them felt very passionately and strongly about the film. And especially what Paul Verhoeven uh, has consistently done is push people's buttons. Now there are filmmakers that do it with a perhaps irresponsibility attitude, and that's how um, Paul Verhoeven has been treated. Those of you who are going to brave it out tomorrow night and try and reevaluate Showgirls, um, I fucking dare you. I dare you to come out to that film and not laugh at it. And most fans that love this movie, they have never thought of it as being as perhaps intelligent and subversive as Total Recall, Robocop, Starship Trooper. Why would he not know what he's doing with Showgirls and hopefully tonight, Basic Instinct? So, while we watch this movie 25 years later, we can um, get to celebrate this woman, Sharon Stone. Can we give it up for her performance in Total Recall? Uh, who is a, who's a genuine Sharon Stone fan? Okay, we got a couple of you. Why, who wants to tell me why they're a genuine Sharon Stone fan? Sliver. Deadly Blessing. Okay, Deadly Blessing, that's good. It goes back to Wes Craven. Why do you like Sliver? Because everybody else hated it. <laughs> All right, so you went for it, and, and you like that Baldwin sex scene? You just like her. Do you know about this book? Come on down. All right, I like this. Self-proclaimed sliver fan. Uh, now this book, Sharon Stone wrote the text to these photographs of real statued angels from all around the world. And the book is called Something to Hold. There you go. So when you think about an actress like Sharon Stone, who uh, receives a lot of critical attention for this movie, um, much like many films that are sexual, most people only think about the sex. And they forget to notice the actual actress, the character, or perhaps the performance. So for some of you, you, you already have an image or a scene that is in this movie. Get over it. <laughs> in fact, the scene works quite well, and there's a whole other movie that surrounds it. <laughs> now, in a college dorm room, a lot of people would just fast forward many movies, like A Clockwork Orange. I remember watching that in a dorm room, and people would watch just the first half. The second half is boring. They'd leave. That's insane. Watching just that scene of Basic Instinct, or thinking about all the people who reference it as a joke, or... This is an Alfred Hitchcock masterpiece right here. And this is so well made. This isn't just referencing Hitchcock, this is updating it. This is bringing it to a whole new generation. I can say this movie melted my mind 25 years ago, and I can't wait to see a 35 millimeter print specifically brought out here for just tonight. Can we give it up here for Carl? Projectionist, which by the way, is uh, anytime something goes wrong with a 35 millimeter projector, it's like we're in a museum. It's beautiful to get to see the heads and the tails, to get to see the scratches. There's hardly any theaters that still project these things. So, um, Carl, it's a thankless job. We thank you. Get out your tickets. I got some prizes to give away to you. Those of you who are still here. Um, as I said, Paul Verhoeven, he's got, tomorrow we've got Robocop, which will be projected in the correct aspect ratio for the first time in a theater. 
Uh, all the 35 millimeter prints were incorrect when they were made. This is also the director's cut of the film. We're playing the NC-17 35 millimeter print of Showgirls. And there's a special surprise for those of you that are truly maniacs and you love to just sit in an old movie theater amongst hopefully your new friends and watch a really amazing surprise. That's all I can say. Um, on Sunday, we've got Spedders, and you will see a trailer for Spedders here, along with a couple of other Paul Verhoeven films, um, with Starship Troopers. And those of you who still think that Starship Troopers is just Beverly Hills 90210 in space, they're right. Uh, it's also added with the line that Alejandro Hodorowski has claimed Starship Troopers the only great American film in the past 30 years. <laughs> so those of you that think you like El Topo and Holy Mountain, but really you just watched the documentary, please come out to Starship Troopers and have your minds blown. All right, your ticket here. You've got a number up in there. I would love for number 33 to come up, number 61, number 86, and number 99. Any of those numbers, please come on up. Did I go too fast for you? Yes. We got one for you, beautiful. What this is, is a double-sided one sheet to Paul Verhoeven's L. Oh. There you go. These are going for $50 online. They don't make movie posters anymore. As you notice, they're little JPEGs that Paul Verhoeven probably put in one of his movies. Let me see that number. <laughs> All right, number 99, do we still have a 99? Okay, how about a 110? I want a 44. 110, 44, how about a 13? We got a 13 still? It is Friday the 13th. No, it is Friday the 13th. Fuck you. <laughs> how about 77? Number one. Where's number one? <laughs> number one is hilarious. There you go. Who wants one of these? Right here. Yeah, I want, I want to give this to you. Okay, how about a trivia question? What was Paul Verhoeven's fifth American film? You want to go for Hollow Man? No. You're just guessing? <laughs> we got Flesh and Blood, Robocop, Total Recall, Basic Instinct. Let's just give it to you. If you're a Hollow Man fan, come here, right? Who loves Hollow Man? I can honestly tell you when I started collecting 35 millimeter prints, this was a long time ago. And what you're going to see tonight are some trailers that I've collected. It was at the beginning of the internet. And the uh, only way you could buy movie prints was through code. And th this was my first ad that I ever saw. There was the invisible human that starred Kevin Sausage. <laughs> and I knew what movie it was. And to collect 35 prints and trailers, uh, you have to go around the studios. They often want them destroyed. They want the trailers destroyed. And I think that is truly a sad loss when you don't get to feel the history of the movie. Now, some of you know to look up in the right-hand corner tonight. So there'll be a little cigarette burn. Our projectionist will be switching over from one projector to the other. And this print is truly from 1992. And you're part of the history of Basic Instinct now. People protested this print in both perspectives. Is there a number 40 that's still here? Come on down, beautiful. Now who collects cassettes? Why do you collect cassettes? They sound great. No one else does. Because nobody else does. They're cheaper, right? Isn't that why you started collecting records? CDs don't play? All right, for that, I'm going to give you a Basic Instinct soundtrack on cassette. You guys, please turn your, turn your cell phones off. My name is Jesse Arthur and Fix. This has been X for Mediax.
Can we give it up to Carl, our projectionist tonight? Thank you for sticking out, those of you who are still here. I, um, first off, uh, having a San Francisco film like Basic Instinct is um, always special, and I wanted to tell all of you who are still here that I'm screening What's Up Doc next yeah. Wednesday at uh, the Alamo Draft House with Peter Bogdanovich in person. And it's a classic San Francisco experience, car chase uh, classic. Uh, and it's also screening with a movie called Noises Off, Oh, yes. That um, came out the same year as Basic Instinct. Uh, was, was reviled by many critics because he decided to film it like a play. And that was the point. Um, so I would love to maybe see some of you there. Uh, how did Basic Instinct hold up? It's crazy, right? Better now than then. Right? So um, it w apart from referencing Vertigo and maybe tons of film noir, like um, In a Lonely Place, or I'm more interested in if you think um, she did it. Catherine. It's so, it, it's something that I rarely read in any reviews. It's as if they, it, it's as if people just didn't have to have an opinion. Um, but if she didn't do it, I find that so fascinating. Because if she didn't do it, then not only is she a victim, not only is she sort of being caught up in, in this world, who, who would have done it? He could have, or his uh, No, or uh, Dorothy Malone. Could be yeah. Yeah. Oh, Hazel. Hazel, yeah. I mean, isn't Hazel just terrifying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, never, they never explain her in detail. She's always in certain oh places. Right. I, <laughs> which means then perhaps the relationship she has over over our, you know, our victim then? I mean, I mean, she then is suddenly trapped in perhaps some sort of miscommunicated relationship that she's hiding from everyone, or... Um, there's so much to a Paul Verhoeven film, and it, it doesn't stop with the sensationalism. And I hope that some of you will, will truly come out for Showgirls tomorrow, because I genuinely think it's one of the greatest films of the 90s. Uh, with, with no jokes. Uh, it has the same sort of layering and um, it, the movie lives the part, as in it's practicing what the characters are preaching. Um, the secret surprise next week, or the secret surprise tomorrow night uh, is really special and, and I would love you to be here for it. Uh, Robocop starts it off. Does anybody want one of these L posters? I have I have a couple more of them. So attack me! I've, I've got a, I've got a few of them. You guys be safe going home tonight. Have a wonderful night. <laughs>